Hey, this is Gerald Rogers. I am here in beautiful Ubud, Bali, and I happen to be staying at the house where the movie Eat, Pray, Love was filmed. I don't know if you've seen that movie with Julia Roberts or not, but it's a beautiful story about this woman who kind of goes through a midlife crisis and she realizes that the life that she created isn't the life that she wants. And she goes through this process of letting go of all the things that don't serve her anymore and she goes on this path, this journey to find herself and to find out what her life is really meant to be and to find out who she is and find out how to love herself. And so I really want to share some thoughts on how to love yourself fully because I think this journey that Julia Roberts goes on in this movie is it's a beautiful metaphor for what most of us experience at some point in our life. Have you ever experienced that, um, that time in your life where you felt like you didn't fit any longer in the life that you created? That for whatever reason there was a part of your soul that felt suffocated or trapped or felt, um, felt like you couldn't fully express yourself? Have you ever felt like um, there was something out there calling you forth? And, and maybe even this experience of feeling like you don't even know who you are. You know, I, I know I've felt that way, and, and most people that I've talked to at some point have gone through what we might call a midlife crisis. Um, for me, I know one of those times was as I went through this divorce um, after 16 years of being married and feeling like I no longer fit within that relationship. I felt like there was something outside of me, and I didn't know who I was outside of that relationship and outside of the context. And, and it put me on a path where I wanted to find myself. And for those of you that are experiencing this yearning to understand yourself and to love yourself more fully, I would love to give you some of the, I guess, shortcuts or, or clues that I found along the way to help that happen. So the first key to finding yourself or loving yourself is to take time with yourself. Like I know it sounds ridiculously simple, but the reality is we're so busy rushing and doing and getting and, you know, we have all these goals outside of us and, and in our mind somehow we get caught in the illusion or this this false idea that, that that is perpetuated through our society that somehow happiness exists out there. Somehow what we want in order to have more happiness we need to get more stuff or to achieve more things and so we hit these points of like frustration because the more we chase that mirage the more frustrated we become because we realize that those things outside us can never fulfill what's inside of us and so it really is critical that we take time for ourselves. and you know here I am in Bali and in that that movie she travels to India and then to Italy and to to Bali on this quest for herself and what I want to emphasize is you don't need to travel to the other side of the world to find you <laughs> you know obviously you exist wherever you are but what's helpful about traveling sometimes is we escape the the tight confines of our life we 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 escape the paradigms that we um, are stuck in patterns and rituals and behaviors and, and all of the habits um, that are perpetuated from, from being in a certain situation. And when we get outside of those situations, when we go travel to a new place and take time with ourselves, um, sometimes that helps activate these awarenesses because we start to see ourselves differently as we're in new situations. But the most critical thing is just to take that time to be with you, to stop the noise from coming in and take time to be with you. And, and one of the things that I found really helpful, and it's interesting in, in the movie, uh, Julie Roberts does this, this uh, time of silence, silent meditation. So I went and did this 10 days of silence. It's called Vipassana Meditation. Um, you can check it out at vipassana.org. But it's, it's a beautiful chance to take 10 days where you eliminate all the noise in your life. And I want you to imagine this, because most people struggle taking an hour of being silent. 
much less a day. Now imagine 10 days, and in 10 days, you don't have any books to read, you don't have any journals to write in, you, you, you don't have anyone to talk to, you don't even have eye contact with other people. For 10 days, you're deeply immersed into your own world. And what's interesting is, because of all of the noise that's going on, all the constant noise chatter, it's really, it really takes time. It takes several, several days before we get through all that noise chatter and get to a place of stillness. And in that stillness, we can see ourselves more perfectly. And so, um, and once again, I'm not saying that you need 10 days of silence to find yourself, but, but finding this time to be with you is really important and really valuable. Uh, the second key that I would say is um, be around others that inspire you. You know, there's, there's so much value in, in relationships that encourage you to be the best version of you. And sometimes it's helpful to have other people around us that can reflect the highest and best inside of us. And, and what's challenging sometimes is when we get stuck in toxic or negative relationships where we get stuck hanging around people just because of people that we've hung around in the past. And, and in that space, we, we become, uh, we become, we play certain roles for other people. We play, um, we play these roles where they expect us to show up in a certain way. And so we, we run these patterns and, and we have these certain behaviors that sometimes aren't really ideal for us. And, and uh, there's sometimes as we're on this path to activating the highest and best of ourselves and stepping into loving ourselves that it's important to be around others that love us. And, and sometimes that might mean separating yourself or getting distance from the, the people that are a toxic influence and bring out the worst in you. Um, so find your tribe. Find a tribe of people that inspire you. Find a tribe of people that love you. Find a tribe of people that believe in you. Find a tribe of people that encourage you to be the best version of you. Um, if you're looking for that support, I really, really encourage you to click the link below and, and join the tribe. Um, we have a group of inspired individuals called, called the Prosperity Tribe, and in this tribe, we really, really focus on encouraging and uplifting and inspiring each other. Um, and that happens both online as well as it happens um, through our live events. So the Big is a great example of an event where you come together and you're just surrounded by a community of people that believe in you and want the best for you. So find your tribe, join us, and we'd love to support you in that path. The, uh, the third key that I'd offer in terms of this path of loving yourself, um, it's an interesting one and, and it takes it takes time and sometimes it takes additional coaching to get to, but loving ourselves means being able to love all of us. You know, it's easy to love the parts of ourselves that are bright and shiny and beautiful and happy, but the true self-love comes when you can come to love the shadow inside of you as well. There's a great book called Dark Side of the Light Chasers, one book that has helped me so much in my own healing journey, but basically, in this, in this journey of shadow work, you need to learn how to love the darkest, most despicable parts of you. And I know that sounds like a, a, a really bold and, and challenging concept for some people, but when we can love those parts of us that we shame, that those parts of us that we feel like we've made mistakes or we've hurt people or we've done things that we regret, when we can learn how to love that broken, wounded child inside of, inside of us that felt like it needed to act out in an unhealthy way. When we can love that part of us that feels like it's not good enough, that, feel, that feels like it's um, broken. When we can love that and give that wounded child inside of us the love that he or she needs, then all of a sudden what's beautiful is that it activates us so that we can experience more of the light within us too. As we experience the full dimension of our shadow, then all of a sudden it gives us permission to shine more boldly in our light. And we realize that every part of us is lovable. Every part. There's not a single part of you that isn't lovable, that doesn't deserve to be nurtured. And I get that you may have made mistakes in the past. I get that there's part of you that you really 
have had a hard time embracing. I get that there's times in our life where we don't show up as the highest and best in ourselves and we end up hurting and we make so many mistakes. But I promise that even that part of you deserves to be loved because each one of us is just doing the very best we know how at the time. And, um, and what's beautiful is we learn how to love the shadow then all of a sudden it gives our light more permission to shine. Um, we'll be doing additional training on shadow work and actually giving you some processes. But I, I want to really, um, really emphasize this, this message that self-love, self-love is learning how to love and embrace all of you. And in embracing and loving all of you, then all of a sudden you have so much more love to give to each other. And the final tip that I'd offer in terms of this path of how to truly, unconditionally, radically and unapologetically love you. The final tip I would give you is this. Create your own self-nurture list. You know, what are the things that do make you loved? And rather than waiting for someone else to give those to you, rather than hoping that someone is going to read your mind and, and to know to show up and give you flowers or give you a massage or whatever it might be, what if you took full responsibility for that yourself? What if you claim the, the role of, of being your own greatest lover, you know, to be the great love of your own life and, and to give yourself those things that you're craving and nurturing. So I encourage you, if I were to give you a coaching assignment right now is to create a list of 20 things that make you feel absolutely, totally alive, make you feel totally loved. And it might be getting a massage. Maybe it's taking a hot bath and using some essential oils and some candles and listening to some music. Maybe it's a walk in nature. Maybe it's some delicious food. Maybe it's, um, maybe there's certain people that when you're around them, you just feel so alive and so loved. Maybe it's um, taking time to journal. Maybe it's reading your favorite book. Maybe it's, and, and the key is this, especially for those of you that are busy. You've got work, you've got jobs, you've got family, maybe you have kids, you have all of these responsibilities. How much time are you giving to yourself? And to actually block it off in your calendar. It's like, hey, this is my self-care time. This is my self-love time. And, and to build it into your schedule so that you're actively loving you. And just like anything, it's a relationship with yourself that you're building. And like any relationship, in order to build that relationship, you need to invest in that relationship. You need to constantly pour into that relationship. If you had any other relationship in your life and you weren't taking time, you weren't saying nice things, and you were, if you were in like, I want you to think about the, the thoughts that go through your mind, like the self chatter, right? Do you find yourself being critical and, and, and self judgmental? You know, would you say to others, that you cared about what you say to yourself. If not, like you have to filter out and give to yourself the words and uh, that you desire. And, and once again, build that relationship with your, yourself. And, and here's the deal, like if you wanna be in a relationship, a conscious, meaningful relationship with someone else, you can only receive love to the degree that you love yourself. So give that love to yourself. Build your self-nurture list, dedicate that time, put it in the calendar and and uh, watch your love flourish. So once again, I just want to remind you, you are worthy of all that you desire. Uh, and from me and Julia Roberts, who is sitting here, if you haven't watched that movie, I encourage you to watch it, but it's, it's a great reminder, you know? But I, I want to encourage you to remember, you don't need to travel all the way to Bali to find yourself. But if you do, it's a <laughs> magical place to experience but you can find yourself today. You can love yourself fully today. So just take it good care of you because you deserve it. So Gerald Rogers reminding you that you have one life to live. So love big. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, please, please, please make sure you subscribe for further videos where we train you on how to build the life that you love and especially how to take your message inside of you, your purpose, 
and how to make that profitable. Um, and if you have not yet joined the tribe, click for $1, you can join the tribe and with that, you get access to weekly training calls where we inspire and support you in living the best version of your life. And not only that, I've created a, a course called Purpose to Prosperity, which is a course of teaching you how to take those gifts, take that mission, take that passion inside of you and share it with the world so you can make money doing what you love. That uh, course is my gift to you. Normally it's $500, but once again, when you click the link to join the tribe, it's just $1. And I look forward to seeing you at one of our future events. Until then, namaste. Remember, you have one life to live.